Hello and welcome to the Pear Blossom Press YouTube channel. My name is Lynn or LV Handcrafted here on YouTube and today I'm going to make a light up galaxy card. I have a A2 size panel out of Bristol Smooth uh, cardstock. It's cut to four and a quarter by five and a half. And the first thing I will do is just heat emboss my sentiment. At the end of the day, this card is going to be um, fairly flat. It could be if you didn't turn it into a light up card. So this is a really easy way to just take your cards to the next level by just adding a one light to it. So I've heat embossed my sentiment and that way when I do my ink blending, I can just ink blend right over this and that heat embossing will preserve the white of the sentiment. Now I'd like to start my galaxies off with uh, bright, bright colors. So I've got squeezed lemonade and these are all going to be distressed oxides. For me, they tend to blend a little bit better. I have worn lipstick, salvage patina. I pulled out twisted citron, but as it turns out, when you overlap the squeezed lemonade and the salvage patina, it actually, you get a pretty nice green, almost like twisted citron. So I ended up not using that and just overlapped the colors a little bit. Then for my blues, and this is where I'm going to start to add some depth to my galaxy, I have blueprint sketch, which I filled in the rest of the white areas that don't have the other bright colors. And I have chipped sapphire and I will go in lastly with black soot. So as I'm doing this, the bright splotches of colors are really just random. But as I add the darker blues and the black soot, I'm really um, just going to go over uh, a lot of that bright, bright color that we added, but I want to preserve some of it. So, you know, it's just looking for that balance of, you know, letting some of it still shine through and um, darkening other parts so that you get that night galaxy look. And what I've learned whenever I make a background is for most backgrounds, not just galaxy backgrounds, a lot of times it doesn't look all that great <laughs> as you're doing it and um, you just have to kind of push through that phase where it's not looking so hot and um, then once you get everything else, especially with the background where you're building kind of mats and layers on top of it, it uh, starts to evolve and look a lot better. Now with the galaxy backgrounds, they tend to be, uh, at least the way that I make them, they tend to be the star where I'm not gonna add um, too much more on top of, but what really helps to add some definition is splattering on the stars. So, the first layer of splatter I did was just with plain water. And because these are distressed oxides, that water is going to activate the ink where you can then lift away some of that pigment. Then I've splattered on Brutus Monroe Chroma Mist in white. That gives a little bit of sparkle, but it's kind of subtle. So I still have some of that Chroma Mist um, on my acrylic block here, and I'm gonna add titanium white. This is just a uh, gouache that I have, but you could use something like an acrylic paint. Anything that's a uh, nice white opaque and I'm going to splatter this. So these different splatters are actually going to give you a lot of depth. It's going to make it seem like some of the stars are maybe further away, um, in particular the ones that we splattered with just plain water, because all, all that did was lift some of the ink. And then the chroma mist uh, splatters, they aren't super opaque, but they have a bit of shine. And then the last layer of um, splatter that I added, that titanium white is nice and bright. And combined with the chroma mist, it will also shine. So you have varying degrees of brightness in all of those splatters. And all of that depth really helps to um, lift 
the galaxy and now all I have to do is just add my light up component. So as part of my sentiment, there was a stamp that has this uh, little twinkle star and I chose that because I thought that would be the perfect place to actually put a one light behind. And the one lights are really great because they are self-contained. It's one small um, chipboard unit, or unit and it's really, really easy to install. You just need to know where you want to put that light. So I poked a hole through my Galaxy panel and then I um, just used my pencil to transfer that location to the card base. And I usually do this on all of my cards. And so I was trying to figure out whether I wanted to do this um, this time around as well. And in the end, I decided to do it, which is to back up this panel with a second layer of cardstock. But I thought that it might dim the light too much. And so I'm actually just cutting a circle right around where my light is going to be. And so that really concentrates the light while blocking out everything else. And that way you don't see the shadows that would otherwise be cast by things like the battery unit and foam that's behind that back panel. So that black, that extra layer of dark just helps to block out all the shadows and you don't see all of the inner workings. It really cleans up your card um, quite a lot and still lets a lot of light through. So to install the light on the one light, it can't be any simpler. All you need to do once you have double checked <laughs> the location where you want it to be, I just attach it with some liquid adhesive. I just put some liquid adhesive behind it. You could probably just use a dry adhesive as well if you'd like and stick it down where you need right onto your card base. Then with the Pear Blossom Press World's Best Foam, I am going to generously um, cover the rest of my card front with some foam. I don't like to have any saggy areas, so I do like to put a couple of strips of foam in the center as well, just so that um, it's uh, nice and feels nice and solid and, and supported. And that's why I wanted that black layer to kind of block out shadows because otherwise when you turn this on, you would have been able to see those foam strips. But because we have that extra layer of cardstock, you can't see any of those shadows. You really only see where the star is and how it lights up. I hope you enjoyed this video today. I'll leave links to all of the products that I used in the description box below. Thanks so much and until next time, happy crafting and have a fabulous day. Bye!